Hello and welcome to the Ask Assad Show. I'm Michael Gaines and glad you are joining us today as we continue our ongoing conversation uh, and bringing insight out and bringing you expert analysis and perspective on the energy industry with uh, insights both from here and uh, all over the world. So we are glad you are joining us on uh, actually today's special episode where we continue our focus on the Middle East in our regional series. So we look forward to talking a little more about that uh, later in our program. But before we do, we're gonna go ahead and bring in uh, our our social media guru, as we like to say, uh, Shelby Dumain, to talk about how you can be a part of today's conversation. Hey, Shelby. Hey, Michael. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple different ways that uh, you watching this at home can get involved. The first way, and, and maybe the most easiest way, is simply by commenting below. So if you have a question for our special guest or or something that you would like to ask Assad uh, at any point throughout the show, you can do so by commenting, uh, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, you can go ahead and comment uh, in the comments. And I'm in that section, the entire show, reading everything. And in fact, if I, I see a lot of people saying hello in the comments now, I think I even saw one bonjour. So maybe we have some folks from uh, France tuning in. Uh, but go ahead and comment where you're where you're watching from. Um, we love to see what countries and what regions our viewers are are in and and tuning in from. Um, and then after the show, if you have more questions or maybe an idea for a future episode, something you would like to see us cover here on Ask Aside, uh, you can reach out to us a couple different ways. The first is you can email us at askassad at nov.com. So that uh, that email is on the screen now. And uh, the other way, and, and uh, I think viewers of the show will know it's my favorite way, is you can give us a call. That number is also on the screen. It is country code plus one three four six two two three four seven nine nine. You can give us a ring, uh, leave a voicemail. Um, I always say, like, say you can stay anonymous or you can let us know your name and, and maybe where you're from or where you work and we could feature you on a future episode. Um, so those are all the different ways that you can get in contact with us after the show. Uh, but like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and let us know um, here in the comments. Oh, and I'm seeing some great um, people in, in Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, the Philippines, um, Singapore, the UK. Uh, it's great seeing where everyone's from and and I look forward to more conversation with you at the end of the show. That is that is so cool. I love seeing, uh, it, you know, one of the things that we we haven't gotten to do recently is travel. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to kind of have a digital version of that and 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 see where where folks are joining us from. So that's mm -hmm. great. Thanks, Shelby. Appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, we are going to go and introduce uh, our show's namesake as well. So Asad Mahana, the director. Uh, business strategy here, NOV. Asad, uh, really great to see you on this special uh, edition of our, our show where we're we're focusing on on the Middle East. I know last week we had Ed Whitnell, and uh, and so this week we've got a, a very special guest that we'll we'll introduce uh, in just just a moment. Um, great to see you too, Michael. And uh, looking forward to that. So before we dive in and, and bring in our special guest, we just wanted to, uh, as always, give you an opportunity to, to give us a very brief uh, overview of, of things happening uh, on a broad level in the in the energy world. And I know that uh, as uh, even though I'm always thinking there's that there's going to be nothing happening, the, the contrary seems to be be the case uh, at present. That's right. Lots of lots of news uh, these days, Michael. Uh, we talked a little bit last week about what's happening between ConocoPhillips and Concho, uh, perhaps merging yesterday. Uh, that news was confirmed and the merger was announced for $9.7 billion. Uh, the other thing that I think that not many uh, have yet uh, gotten the chance to hear about is talks between Pioneer um, and uh, Parsley to join forces and that, that piece of news came, uh, as you know, Michael, last night, which is really continuation of the consolidation of uh, the shale industry, um, really in route to uh, recovery, really completing the path towards recovery. So I think it's great news. The other option would have been, uh, perhaps the other route would have been bankruptcy, which I think um, wouldn't have served uh, the acquired company as well uh, really, it's about distribution of equity uh, instead of uh, the uh, lenders taking 
uh, equity from the company being acquired. In this case, it's another old company that's perhaps uh, better managed, more uh, uh, well run, uh, that will consolidate and leverage uh, resources in both ways. But I want to talk about the Middle East today, a region that's very dear to my heart, and with our very special guest uh, today, Michael. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot happening, and we'll continue to stay on that uh, for sure, Saad. Uh, so, yeah, I want to take a moment and introduce our special guest today, uh, Mr. Qasem Al Kayumi, who is the Senior Vice President of Exploration and Information Management in Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, ADNOC. Um, uh, Al Kayumi's work experience includes exploration, drilling, reservoir management reservoir stimulation, field development, business planning, field operations, information management, technology development, and deployment. Uh, he is an active member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, serving as a Middle East regional director and contributing to various local and regional forums and applied technology workshops. Uh, Mr. Al Kayumi holds a Bachelor of Science in Petroleum Engineering from the University of Southern California here in the United States. So, uh, Mr. Al Kayumi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, and it's an honor to, to be part of this show. Thank you. Awesome. Salam alaikum. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, it's great to see you again. Thank you, Asad. It's a pleasure to see you again, also. And uh, I'm excited, really, to, to be part of this show and looking forward to your questions and maybe some uh, interaction with the audience. Absolutely, and so are we. Uh, Qasem, the UAE has been at the forefront of technology adoption and youth empowerment. Uh, only three months ago, I think we heard some great news about the UAE uh, launching its uh, satellite mission to Mars, the first Arabic country to do that, which is a, a great, great honor. Um, Al-Amal in Arabic or hope uh, as it translates to English. Um, we know also ADNOC is one of the world's largest oil producers and the backbone for the UAE. And um, not too long ago, the 2030 strategy for the UAE was announced paving the way for the next decade. Um, could you tell us and our listeners a little bit about Strategy 2030 and, and what does that mean for upstream oil and gas in the UAE? Uh, ADNOC 2030 strategy is about uh, smart growth and sustainability. We wanted to have shared vision uh, and understanding of these objectives throughout ADNOC community. It mainly uh, rely or based on uh, building our production capacity. Uh, currently, we are producing around 4 million, well, the capacity, uh, the, our current capacity is around 4 million, and we want to build that to around uh, 5 million barrels per day capacity by 2030. Uh, also, it, uh, it has a component of uh, gas self-sufficiency, and also, it has other components like downstream and uh, smart uh, or adaptive uh, trade. Uh, uh, cost efficiency, uh, improving performance is also a, a big part of that uh, strategy. So this is really in, in brief. Uh, I can dwell more if you like, uh, but I'm just dis giving you a, a high level description of this 2030. As you rightly said, uh, ADNOC is the backbone of the UAE uh, uh, economy and the 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 plans here are uh, long term plans and hence adnoc has to uh, base their plans uh, in alignment with the with the government uh, plans which are also long term plans right which ends up being a not just a local player but a regional and a world player in the uh, hydrocarbon and energy market as a whole uh, i bet Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, we are the, the fourth uh, uh, largest uh, oil uh, producer in, in the world and uh, also top 10 in when it comes to hydrocarbon reserves. 
Right. We have many international, uh, I mean, uh, oil companies uh, as partners. Uh, almost most of the major IOCs are partner in our uh, uh, field uh, uh, operations. Plus, we have all the major service companies uh, also in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And uh, hence, uh, we really uh, uh, a major uh, player in this, uh, in this industry uh, from east to west. Kasim, um, I want to dig a little deeper on your digital and technology strategy. The COVID-19 pandemic made many companies jump on the technology wagon only a few months ago, but not Adnoc. I remember we had discussions about some of the great things that Adnoc's doing um, in digitalization, in technology adoption to support that strategy 2030 growth. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay. We look at technology or data as enabler to really achieving our business. So it is uh, something not new for Adnoc. I mean, since we, since this, I mean, uh, uh, company was established, we were always a front runner when it comes to adapting uh, the latest technology in our industry. This, of course, uh, apply to all our sector in the in the industry from the subsurface when it comes to reservoir modeling uh, we have all the you know uh, latest uh, tools if you want to call it and best practices when it comes to understanding our uh, our uh, reservoirs when it coming to reservoir characterization uh, and uh, when it comes to drilling also we use uh, the latest you know uh, technology in, in drilling. Uh, we are uh, breaking uh, records when it comes to horizontal wells and uh, maximum reservoir contact wells. Thanks, of course, to our partner and our IOCs. For example, in uh, Upper Zakom, which is one of the biggest fields in the world, maybe one of the biggest offshore fields in the world, uh, we have ExxonMobil as a partner, and they are using their Sakhalin technology when it comes to uh, drilling these uh, extended reach wells uh, especially that we drill this well from uh, artificial islands. Uh, when it comes to production, you know, we use latest now uh, digital oil fields, especially for our new fields, uh, mainly to try to improve efficiency because we can do real-time monitoring of our uh, facilities. But also uh, we use it to optimize resources because we can do remote operation activities. And we have many other activities. Now, when it comes to new, let's say, technologies, which is mainly digital technologies, we are also now uh, very much uh, uh, focused on this uh, subject. And we have now three uh, important uh, technology center in Adnoc. Uh, one, we call it Panorama. One, we call it Tamama. And one is the drilling real-time monitoring center. Uh, in Panorama, it is really a high-level uh, center where we focus on both uh, mainly surface activities, uh, we're focusing on, for example, uh, predictive uh, failures, predictive maintenance, and having the holistic picture of ADNOC from, as we say, uh, from rock to stock. I mean, all the way, we, we want to model this whole thing. Uh, uh, we also use that center really to identify opportunity for better, uh, uh, better improvement in, in performance. When it comes to subsurface, it comes to the Thamama Center. Yeah. We call it Thamama because the, after one of our major uh, uh, reservoirs in, uh, in, in Adnok, Thamama Reservoir. And here, uh, we, we apply all required technology. For example, currently we are shooting the biggest 3D seismic in the world. We are uh -huh. covering Abu Dhabi, uh, the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Uh, almost 80,000 square kilometer from offshore to onshore with the high resolution, uh, highly dense uh, seismic OBC uh, technology. Uh, now this data require uh, analysis and, and processing. So we use the latest uh, processing technique uh, supplied by our uh, partner, IOC partners, but also by our service companies uh, to better uh, make use of this data from shallow reservoir all the way to deep reservoir for our conventional and unconventional reservoir, oil and gas. We also use this center to 
really come up with the latest uh, technology to accurately model our reservoirs uh, using uh, uh, high resolution, you know, uh, uh, high definition uh, modeling techniques. We have also equipped it recently with high performance computing center because the models are becoming bigger because the details are, are more now and we have more information. Uh, we, are, we are using uh, drilling technology when it comes, for example, uh, uh, to monitoring our rig performance. So this is where the, tech, the drilling uh, real-time monitoring center comes. Mm -hmm. We have more than 100 uh, rigs, uh, both onshore and offshore in Abu Dhabi, and we monitor real-time all these rigs. And we have a key performance indicator for each rig, and we do benchmarking. And just that um, effect of comparing each other, I mean, rig are, rigs are being compared to each other, it really creates that positive competition. Yeah. And we have managed to, to reduce the well duration almost 30%. Plus, and, and that, of course, will be translated into huge uh budget saving in this uh, in this area so this is in brief uh when it comes to technology uh Asad. this is this is great i, I bet uh, we can probably speak for hours about each yes. one of these centers and what exactly awesome what, what i hear really is a combination of uh collaboration uh and technology uh really contributes quite significantly to to driving to driving to your goals and and i know michael uh, is probably starting to think of of a of a question for you, but uh, I want to maybe talk a little bit about the integration of the different companies. That must have helped uh, under the one Adnoc umbrella. Uh, that must have done a big uh, uh, effort uh, to drive all of this in a single direction. Because when you're when you're connecting your upstream to your downstream, when you're connecting the surface to the subsurface. Uh, across the value chain, I mean, that's not easy. That's That takes a, a quite a bit of effort and integration across the whole organization uh, to, to reap the value from all of that. So that, that must have been a, a monumental effort to get all of that under under one roof. You're absolutely right, Asad. Uh, this was uh, done a few years ago when we unified our, uh, our brand as Adnoc. You know, we used to have different uh, onshore, offshore companies, different name. Now they are all under Adnoc umbrella. So, for example, we have Adnoc onshore, Adnoc offshore, Adnoc drilling, Adnoc sober gas, and so on and so on. Adnoc, uh, 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 you know, Adnoc, Adnoc refining, for yeah. for example. And and these help help us to centralize our activities and synergize all these efforts. So yeah. our IT team, for example, in Adnoc headquarters, uh, has a very direct link now with the ITs in all other operating companies. Uh -huh. Our our solutions, our t our tools are all, all applied same across all opcos. Our uh, high performance computing, for example, we are centralizing it. When it comes to data management and data governance, you know, it's yeah. one one Adnoc uh, uh, one Adnoc, uh, let's say, governance. So I agree with you, and this is really helping us to to uh, uh, to execute these strategies and uh, uh, and best practices very easily uh, across our uh, our companies and across the value chain, as you say. Good. So, sorry, Michael. I don't mean to to be uh, holding the mic here. Uh, the floor is yours. We we can't hear you. I think you're on, you're on mute or something's wrong with my mic. Oh well, well I was hoping you had learned uh, to lip read for me today, but maybe I, maybe no, we'll, yeah. we'll give me give me a few we'll, more we'll months. So can read lip. Yeah, we'll save that for another day. No 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 problem. Uh, yeah, no. As I was saying, I, I really it's it's really a, an honor to hear hear both of you and really your your perspectives uh, and especially you, uh, Kasim, to to hear how uh, you and and your your colleagues have come together to to. Uh, execute these strategies, and I know that uh, one of the uh, pillars of of executing a, a good strategy is is really overall alignment. And so, so with that, I, I was curious to know, uh, you know, some of the 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 best practices, or or not even best practices, but practices and lessons learned that uh, that that you and others have observed, especially as you're looking at 
uh, as I just mentioned, the alignment with drilling contractors and service companies ultimately to to achieve the goals that 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 you have. How how has that come about, and what is what does that look like? Okay, and again, I mean, this is not something new. I mean, we simply cannot do our business without our uh, contractors. They are our business partners. So we have a long history of partnership uh, with our major uh, service uh, companies, the drilling contractors, and all other suppliers, of course. So it is really about continuous dialogue and understanding each other. Uh, during the good time, of course, we all enjoy this, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, benefit of this industry. And during difficult time, we have to really to to listen to each other and help each other. And that's what we are doing actually in in Adnoc. Uh, we meet uh, frequently at all level, uh, at the technical level, at uh, you know CEO level, and we discuss uh, challenges facing each other. Uh, we uh, take into consideration, you know, the challenges that uh, you know this industry is going through the, right now, and uh, we try really to. Uh, to implement some uh, special, let's say, uh, schemes that will uh, help uh, our uh, service company to, to survive. Uh, things like uh, uh, long-term service uh, agreement, uh, special incentives, you know, linked with the performance, uh, special uh, price agreement linked with the oil prices, uh, and so on. Uh, we are also uh, implementing now category management, which help us really to... Uh, prioritize our uh, or, or group our services into major category and then we identify our key supplier in that uh, in that uh, area and uh, we get some kind of a volume discount based on these uh, uh, arrangements uh, so it's it's a continuous dialogue and and uh, it's about understanding each other and, and 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 supporting each other so that we both of us, could achieve our our uh, objectives. Mm. No, and that's that's really good to hear. And, and it certainly sounds like you you and, and others have put a, a significant amount of of thought and uh, uh, a conversation into really understanding how to support, uh, as you call them, your business partners, those uh, the service providers and, and others who, as you already mentioned and alluded to, uh, might be be. A little bit challenged in in this market, so that's that's good to to really hear how how that's all coming together. Um, I I did want to maybe pivot over a little bit and uh, ask you a question, kind of regarding carbon footprint reduction. I know that that is something that has been an area of conversation uh, as well. Uh, can you talk about some of the the initiatives? Uh, that Adnoc is 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 taking and and uh, and how you you view that space. Yes, uh, uh, we take very seriously uh, protecting uh, our people and protecting our environment while we are conducting our business. Since early you know sixties and seventies, uh, we always uh, were very conscious about uh, ensuring that the oil industry development will not be at the expense of our uh, environment. For example, when it comes to flaring, we have uh, uh, implemented uh, these, uh, you know, facilities, you know, uh, to capture the gas uh, since early 70s, because we, we knew this is really a, a good uh, source for income. It's not only from protecting our environment, but, but you cannot just flare that gas. So we have uh, uh, two companies in Adnoc, which is uh, Adnoc Gas Processing. Uh, we have Adnoc uh, LNG, which are mainly uh, to capture this gas. This is just a small example. When it comes to um, uh, marine uh, protection, you know, we make sure that the produced water is not dumped into the sea. We, of course, uh, capture it, we treat it, and then we we uh, we injected into saline uh, reservoir uh, we have very uh, a strong uh, uh, hse management system with a strong uh, uh, application uh, strictly we uh, we apply this uh, hse management system which deal with health safety and, and environment of course uh, and when it comes to environment uh, we are very much into 
protecting uh, the biodiversity of our uh, of our uh, air and, and 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 marine area of course plus the soil in the in the desert uh, re recently this year actually uh, we have announced uh, or introduced uh, uh, the comprehensive sustainable goals uh, that we are committed as ADNOC to achieve uh, by 2030. One of example of this is to cut the greenhouse gases by 25% uh, mm -hmm. by 2030. And uh, so far, we are ranked at the top five uh, when it comes to greenhouse uh, gases uh, in the oil industry. We're also uh, 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 best uh, company when it comes to methane intensity. Uh, so uh, we we have a lot of initiatives when it comes to uh, uh, really environment. Uh, we 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 do carry out many in initiatives to, for example, uh, uh, plant the the mangrove uh, trees, uh, and these help us really to. Uh, protect our our environment one one other example if we have time is uh, what we do with the co2 capturing mm -hmm. we have established a company called ariada and this company is capturing the co2 from the industry in abu dhabi mainly uh, steel industry uh, we capture it and then we send it to a nearby oil field we use the co2 uh, for enhanced oil recovery so this is the maybe one of the first uh, initiatives in the Middle East where we have a commercial uh, carbon capture and utilization. Uh, and uh, we, we capture around 800,000 tons of CO2 uh, every year. And it is sustainable. It's not just to store it. No, we use it really to enhance our recovery. Uh, we also have a policy of uh, zero, uh, uh, zero flaring policy. So we will only have a flare in case of the like operational upset, but we don't have flaring uh, at all. Uh, and and many other uh, uh, example like fugitive uh, emissions. You know we have uh, strict uh, uh, guidelines or or monitoring system to 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 make sure we don't have these fugitive emissions uh, using special technology like uh, uh, like uh, uh, you know, special camera infrared camera to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and many other uh, uh, many other I would say initiative. Uh, last but not least, protecting our fresh water. Yeah. Most of our water that we use in the operation is from the sea. Uh, uh, we uh, we don't use the fresh water unless it is really uh, necessary. So, and uh, we use also the pr produce water that from the feed. We also use it. We recycle it to enhance the reservoir. Uh, pressure. Wow! No, that's 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 a uh, a very comprehensive list, and 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 really shows the the level of of uh, focus and intentionality that uh, that you and, and others with, within Adnox. So I, I appreciate that that perspective. Some some of that I knew, some some of it I didn't. So I appreciate you you yeah. uh, you sharing that, uh, and and really I think it highlights what what we talked about. Uh, what you talked about earlier, uh, uh, Kasim and 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 Assad as well, is is the the need for you know additional innovation, collaboration, and, and focus not only on how we can continue to produce and develop today, but what does the future look like in terms of innovation and development. So certainly, uh, certainly great to to hear that. So thank you. And and one thing I think that uh, stuck with me was was uh, on your earlier point that just Ariada was uh, definitely a leading project in capturing CO2 for for enhanced oil recovery, uh, but also the the whole uh, innovation not just in the technology side but in the business model side, moving away from as previously mentioned the day rate model to something that's more performance based incentivization. Uh, I think all of that really drives in that in that one direction of uh, n not being a zero sum game. Everybody winning something, um, uh, and, and and definitely uh, UAE and Adnoc being at the forefront. Uh, Kasim, what do you do with with youth engagement? I mean, from an SPE 
uh, perspective, you're the uh, regional di director. Um, that must probably attract quite a bit of engagement and attention. Absolutely right. Uh, Rook, uh, in ADNOC, uh, before I moved to the SPE, we have our four pillars. We call them PPPE, which is people, performance, profitability, and, and efficiency. So people really is one of the very important pillar in any business. Uh, and in, in SPE, uh, uh, we have the young uh, professional uh, you know, programs. And really, it, it is really about attracting uh, the future generation because uh, the industry, you know, have some challenges when it comes to reputation, especially in these current uh, situations. So we have put a lot of programs that will make it appealing to to the young uh, professionals. Uh, we have the student chapters. We have, of course, the local chapters, yeah. uh, which are very active uh, across the world, of course. And in these uh, chapters, we gather uh, almost on... Uh, if not uh, monthly, if not weekly, at least monthly, mm -hmm. and we invite uh, we invite the uh, the expert in the oil industry uh, mm -hmm. to share their knowledge uh, to our uh, members. You know, the mission of uh, SPE Society of Petroleum Engineer is to collate and and disseminate information and mm -hmm. to create that networking between different. Yeah. Uh, uh, communities of, of the oil industry. Yeah. So now, the, because of the uh, pandemic, the COVID-19, SPE is also adapting to this uh, challenge. We are now moving very strongly and very fast. We are moving to digitalization. Uh, all our uh, uh, program are almost uh, or will be very soon uh, digitally available. Uh, for example, a Journal of Petroleum Technology, it is already uh, uh, you know, available as a, as a digital uh, magazine. We have also a platform. You can use your mobile now to search uh, different uh, papers or different subjects uh, utilizing uh, your, your mobile phone. Uh, even the, the conferences, we are now uh, having them uh, either virtual or hybrid between virtual and, uh, and in-person. Uh, we are also, you know, uh, affected by the, the economic crunch because the society is non-profit organization. We rely on contribution from, and, and, uh, and sponsorship, you know, from oil companies and service companies, and all these companies have been affected. So we are trying to be very creative uh, in, in really sustaining our business uh, without really too much uh, impact uh, because of this uh, p pandemic. That's excellent. That was great to hear. Mm. Well, great. Well, I, th I think we are, uh, we've really had a great conversation, um, Kasim, and I, I really appreciate your, your insight. I think we're actually going to move on to our uh, question and answer portion of our program. And uh, to do that, we'll bring in uh, Shelby Dumain to help mm -hmm. us get some of the questions that uh, have been been asked. And uh, through, through our conversation, I've been glancing over at the uh, the comment section and, and it's certainly been been very active. So that's uh, always always a, a good sign and a, a certainly a, a sign of a great guest, uh, but but a great conversation as well. So uh, Shelby, what, uh, what what questions have you seen come through? <laughs> Absolutely, Michael. And I wanted to add too, it's a sign of a great guest, also a sign of a great audience. Uh, so thank you yeah, everyone out there for, for putting in comments. Um, um, we really appreciate that. And uh, and actually this first question, um, I don't always do this, but I wanted to preface it a little bit. Uh, so we, you know, there's, I've seen a couple on digitalization um, or, or in maybe smart well completions. And uh, uh, just for our viewers there, if, if you're not, a, uh, um, if you haven't maybe heard about this much, the so smart well completions, uh, that's typically using, you know, uh, using different digital technologies, uh, maybe to remote control, directly monitor um, wells in the downhole, uh, mainly just to uh, kind of optimize that well production. And so this actual, this first question comes from uh, Musafar Ali on LinkedIn, and he's wondering what is uh, Adnoc doing regarding uh, technology like smart well completion? 
Well, almost half of our production come from offshore. Um, and offshore, you know, you have uh, limited space to maneuver. So from the early time, we used to have uh, wellhead towers to drill these wells. To cover the entire field, you have to go either um, uh, in, like uh, incline uh, well or horizontal well. Now we are moving not from we are moving from wellhead tower to artificial islands. I.e., instead of having let's say hundred of wellhead tower, you have four artificial islands. And this from these four artificial islands, for example, Upper Zakom, you need to cover the entire uh, field, which is by the way. We are talking about giant field here, 30 by maybe 50 uh, kilometer. So the only way to do that is to have this uh, extended reach drilling and maximum reservoir contact that will help you, first of all, cover the entire field, but also to optimize the number of wells because it's very costly to drill these uh, wells, uh, especially in the, in the offshore environment. So this is one example of... Uh, what we are doing uh, in the offshore and we equip these wells with uh, you know special uh, liner and uh, icds with inflow control uh, devices because we want these wells really to last uh, for a long period of time we also equip them with the with the gas lift uh, some of these wells they don't produce any water now but we have equipped them with a mandrel at, uh, in the in the completion because in future if we want to inject gas you just do a, a, a surface tie-in so you don't need to do another walkovers uh, we uh, we always uh, you know try to also improve drilling performance uh, we have uh, you know as i mentioned before the leading iocs in the world are here in abu dhabi we have also the leading uh, service companies so we are always aiming to improve our uh, casing design for example our drilling uh, technology so that we can drill faster, but also without compromising on the well integrity. Mm -hmm. Man, that's really interesting. I think I'm gonna go back after this and really read more about these artificial islands. I think that sounds really fascinating. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard about that. Um, and this next question I think is a great uh, kind of follow up to that. Uh, I know you talked about kind of greener solutions and technology to kind of help um, with the environment. And so, uh, let's see, Mumin Ali on LinkedIn was wondering um, how Adnoc is leveraging that, you know, the digitalization like you just talked about or maybe others uh, to reduce the environmental bill. Hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> if the question is mainly uh, digitalization uh, as uh, uh, in relation to environmental, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think one one way is uh, we are we are uh, trying to uh, use technology that will improve efficiency. Mm. Uh, once you improve efficiency, you will improve also uh, the emissions, you know, from these uh, activities that we are we are talking we are taking place. So we 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 focus on efficiency. Whether this is drilling efficiency, if you can drill the well in let's say. Uh, 20 days versus 40 days, you have really reduced the, uh, the emission from that well or from that rig, from burning diesel, for example, from the light that you need to, you know, or, or you know, to produce uh, ships that really need to go there and burn uh, diesel. Uh, also from a compressor point of view, we use the latest technology to make these compressors or uh, separators or whatever to be very efficient so that the the oil and gas processing does not really uh, require too much power and it does not produce too much uh, emissions uh, we use uh, uh, technology that will enhance uh, 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 energy utilization as much as possible when it comes to monitoring the environmental uh, uh, activities we have a lot of uh, uh, online monitoring system to, to monitor the emissions, uh, also to monitor flaring, even temperature. You know, we have special camera that could monitor the temperature. Uh, if you have too much temperature, sometimes could mean that, uh, you know, you have some kind of uh, inefficiencies in this. Uh, we use drones, for example, also to, uh, 
to survey our uh, our uh, flare stacks or even to monitor our uh, our pipeline if there are any leaks for example uh, and so on uh, the the list is 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 long actually it's a big list and and i would add to that i think custom in on top of improving performance uh, reducing maintenance costs you also use technology and digitalization to reduce personnel on board, which is another big way of paying back and putting people in away from the red zone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, all our new fields uh, that uh, we are now uh, commissioning are digitally enabled. Uh, they are all um, uh, have the technology that you can operate this field uh, uh, remotely. Uh, and this, of course, uh, reduce the number of people on this field. Yeah. Uh, this is also from even safety point of view, you know, you, you know, you, you protect your people uh, uh, instead That's of right. having them in this uh, hazardous uh, uh, right. environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I had another question, but I, that actually kind of brings up um, a, a different audience question that we got. Um, I think we get this question a lot. I've heard a couple of different takes, but I'm really curious on, on your um, perspective. Uh, Lalit uh, Solanki on, on LinkedIn was wondering, um, do you see AI, you know, do you think that's going to replace manpower um, in the oil and gas industry or, or kind of integrate with it? Or, or how do you see AI uh, interacting with the actual humans um, in, in these jobs? Interesting. Uh, it's a difficult question, uh, but I tend to mm -hmm. say no as, a, as an answer. Replacement, no. It will maybe... Uh, um uh you know artificial intelligence i i like to to call it augmented intelligence instead of artificial you know so the technology augments us you know it makes us uh, more uh, uh, more efficient it, it does not replace human you know brain and human uh, uh, in, uh, uh, creativity for example so it's it's simply it makes you more efficient uh you know uh, for example uh, uh, it 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 uh, reduce those routine activities. We have uh, one example in Adnok, where we have our petrophysist. Uh, we we'll look into these uh, reservoir thin sections under the microscope, you know. And this is a painstaking uh, activity which take uh, a lot of focus and uh, a lot a lot a lot of time. Uh, one technology which actually we are using. Uh, which we use it actually from uh, uh, IBM uh, Watson, uh, the technology which is uh, used to recognize flowers from from high resolution picture. So what we do now, we take a high resolution uh, picture of this small piece of rock, which is thin section we call them, and then we train the computer to automatically recognize these rock types. And in this, I mean, we 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 can do now thousand. Of, of these activities, maybe 5,000 or even, it depends on the computer power, maybe even 10,000 in, 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 in a few hours, uh, while this same activity used to take maybe weeks or even months. So this is a small example of how we utilize artificial intelligence to really make us more, more efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and I know we are a little short on time, um, but Mr. Alkoyemi, I, I think this has been such a great confirmation, uh, conversation. I, I can't help but ask one more question. Uh, so I, I think anyone tuning into these usually sees a lot of people uh, looking for opportunities. And I just kind of wanted to talk to that a little bit. Um, do you have any advice for people maybe brand new to the industry or coming back to it uh, that are, are looking for opportunities and, uh, and maybe what you would say to them? Look, uh, oil industry is really a, a, a very fascinating business. My personal, of course, opinion here, uh, and it is changing. Uh, if you if you had this image that oil industry is only about a rig or a, a well, which is uh, producing an oil from a pool of uh, a hole somewhere in the in the in the ground, that is not right. It has all the, the latest technology that you can think of uh, embedded in our business. You have the digital technology, you have the artificial intelligence, the modeling, the digital, uh, what you call it, digital twins. Uh, all of these are, are now uh, embedded 
from the subsurface and from you have the geology you deal with nature if you are adventurous it will give you opportunity to travel around the world so it has a lot of uh, i would say appealing to the young uh, uh, people but all what they need to do is just to educate themselves more about this industry and just not to take the what do you call it the the classical a stereotype about our business. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a great, great reminder uh, that, yeah, it, there is a lot of, of technology. I know that uh, I've, I've spoken many times to our, our uh, NOV's chief technology officer and, and chief marketing officer, David Reed, and, and he's mentioned many times talking to people, and, and you've talked as well in other industries and seeing that there is a lot of innovation and uh, and technology and advancement that has happened in the uh, the oil and gas industry that not only can be uh, uh, kind of cross pollinated to to allude to your previous uh, example of flowers, but but also being able to complement other other areas and that there is a lot of uh, 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 cross utilization of skill sets that can be be used. So that's that's really uh, I really appreciate hearing uh, hearing that perspective. Um, so, so I know that, yeah, as, as Shelby said, Kasim, uh, we're we're running out of time, but I certainly want to give you an opportunity uh, to to maybe close us out here if you had any any uh, uh, last words for us. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me in this show. It's a really great opportunity for me to at least uh, give you some ideas about ATNOC and maybe also Society of Petroleum Engineers. Um, I think if there is one thing is. Uh, our industry is a cyclical industry. We have been through this, you know, difficult time before, you know, ups and downs. Uh, so be strong, uh, uh, don't give up. And I'm sure uh, within hopefully a few months, maximum maybe a year, this whole thing will be behind us, the COVID-19. And uh, there, is, there is demand for energy in future. There is population increase especially in uh, in China and India. The demographic is changing, both China and India and elsewhere in the undeveloped world. The, the middle class is growing up. All of these will require, will require energy, will require, uh, you know, uh, more uh, products from the, uh, the oil industry. And uh, I have no doubt that uh, the oil industry will, will remain as a, an important player in this energy mix. Yes, th we need to transition uh, and uh, uh, we have to work together to ensure a clean environment uh, in, a, in a very responsible manner. Uh, yes, there will be electric uh, cars coming, but it will take time until this whole thing is really disrupted as uh, uh, you know some people uh, allude to. So, Oil industry will will uh, will stay for a long period of time, and all what we're going to to happen is we will complement the other uh, the other uh, energy like solar, uh, wind, and maybe even uh, nuclear. So that's really my 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 advice for our uh, people in the industry to stay positive, and for those who are not yet in the oil industry, please educate yourself. Uh, don't don't just listen to one version of truth. Look into into different version. Myself, my experience has been very positive. I really think this is a fascinating industry, and our role is really to to make it uh, a cleaner energy and more sustainable energy. And thank you very much. Kasim, thank you for your positivity, uh, insight, and leadership today. I think this was uh, this was gr a great great conversation. Kasim. Kayumi, the Senior Vice President for Exploration and Information Management in Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, or ADNOC. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, Asad, thank you. And certainly, uh, thanks to our viewers for joining us today. Uh, we always appreciate your comments and feedback. So as Shelby mentioned at the top of the program, feel free to send us an email if you have a comment on today's a conversation or uh, have an idea for a future topic, you can email us. And that email address is askasad at nov.com. And we'd be more than happy to uh, get your, your comment or uh, to start a dialogue with you. 
or uh, of course you can give us a phone call uh, as well. So for all of us here at NOV, thank you for watching and for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again next time.